Back to the phone lines. We'll talk next to Aaron listening in Surrey, British Columbia, Canada. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Hank. Thanks for uh, taking my call. I'm another Canadian. <laughs> and I know you guys are taking Canadian. over the show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, my question, I was talking with an individual about the Genesis account and whether the tree of life is a metaphor or whether it was something literal that existed, the garden, the tree of life. The person I was talking to was persuaded that this was a metaphor. I am persuaded that there's nothing in the text that needs to be taken as metaphor, but that it can be literal. The tree of life is not only found in the first book of the Bible, but in the last book of the Bible, in Revelation. Also, if you take that passage as a metaphor, the logic of the actual story begins to break down, because if the tree is just a metaphor, then from whence was Adam and Eve driven? You see see my point? Well, I do see your point, but, you know, certainly within the book of Genesis, you have a historical narrative, but it is replete with cemeteries and Hebrew poetry. So the fact that you find the tree of life again in the apocalypse, I don't think, means that you have to take it in a wooden literalistic fashion. I'm not saying you can't, but I'm saying that you must consider what you just mentioned with respect to Revelation. Revelation says, Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in that city, and the servants will serve him, and so forth. The point here being that this is a description not of what heaven will look like, but what heaven is like. Very much like when you see heaven described as a cube. The description there, again, is not to tell us what heaven looks like, but rather to tell us what heaven is like. So certainly in the apocalypse, the language is figurative, it is metaphorical, it is symbolic, very much like when Jesus Christ is described as having a sword coming out of his mouth, or having feet that look like burnished bronze glowing in a furnace. Again, this is not to tell us what Jesus looks like, as though he's got feet made out of bronze, but rather to tell us what Jesus is like. So, you know, I have no problem whatsoever supposing that this is a real tree in the Garden of Eden, which produced a real option for temptation. But it can also be read as a focal point of temptation. I mean, we certainly know that the devil wasn't a talking snake, and we don't suppose that Jesus Christ defeated Satan by stepping on the head of a snake. So again, the description that Moses gives of the devil as a talking snake is not to tell us what Satan looks like, but rather to tell us what Satan is like. Yes, right. But I have no problem with this being a literal tree. And I've actually written about this in my Creation Answer book. I actually talk about three trees of life in my Creation Answer book. Uh, The wisest man who likened wisdom the fruit of righteousness, and longing fulfilled to the proverbial tree of life. So he used it in a metaphorical way. But you have, really, as you point out correctly, the tree of life that you find at the Garden of Eden. You find it in Paradise Restored, but on the fulcrum of history, you also find a tree of life where the Prince of Life reached out both hands such that one hand touched the Edenic Garden, and the other, Paradise Restored. It was through the tree of life on which the Prince of Life was sacrificed that we can have eternal life. And therefore, the leaves of the tree, as described by John in the Apocalypse, are for the healing of the nations. It's not as though we have to eat the leaves of the trees, but they're emblematic that there will no longer be any curse, because the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in that city And nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Unfortunately, I have to leave it at that. Again, I've written about this in the Creation Answer Book. 